hello, 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 and welcome to the show. I'm James J. telling you we all share one universal truth, and that is WWE stands for... No, it's not Walk with Elias, it's Wrestling with Entertainment. Entertainment. What's up, Mitch Mayhem? What's up, James? How are you doing this wonderful evening? I'm pretty good. I know that uh, you haven't been feeling too well, well and hopefully uh, you could muscle through this episode. <laughs> yeah, I've had a migraine and uh, been overworking myself and other things, but I've got a little rest and I'm ready to go. Yeah, this uh, uh, also this week we're missing uh, uh, Terry Bam Bam Gordy and Calico Yates. He has been uh, MIA. And we're not sure if he actually made it to Mania and is just uh, ghosting us at this point because he's having too much fun. Or he didn't actually make it and he got killed on the way <laughs> to WrestleMania. Fun fact. <laughs> yeah. I've never, uh, fun fact, he'll be the second uh, co-host that's been killed on this show. Oh, wow. Yeah, unfortunately. Watch, watch your back, Mitch. Oh, well, now I'm... Uh... I'm going to have to get life insurance, aren't I? No, but <laughs> uh, I was going to say, we're going to have to start looking for pretty soon. If we don't get a hold of Coleco, it is, uh, mug's going to start popping up on the side of milk cartons here yeah. before we know it. From, uh, from California, <laughs> from San Diego Coleco. to New York. Yeah, yeah. No, he's having a blast. He's, he's I'm sure. Yeah, he's, I wouldn't uh, want to talk to us either the... if I was at WrestleMania. Yeah, I'd, I'd be focused on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that had my entire intention. Um, you, uh, tomorrow's obviously WrestleMania. It's a big day. It's, uh, it's, yeah. all, it's all Super Bowl. And you're doing something it's, really interesting for, uh, WrestleMania, uh, Sunday. Could you tell all the people, uh, what's happening? Sure, James. Well, I, uh, I, I used, the, I used to be on another podcast before I joined you many months ago, actually almost a year ago now. And uh, the person who runs that podcast, uh, Scooter Dust, a.k.a. Scott, is my good friend. And he hosts a brilliant commentary uh, host or, uh, commentary show called The Remix with Scooter Dust. Uh, he covers Raw, SmackDowns, and every pay-per-view. And his WrestleMania shows are obviously the biggest show of the year. And I'm going to be on it Sunday. So please join us. I will make sure to drop the link in my uh, Twitter, at Mitch Mayhem X. That's going to be a lot of fun. I don't envy you uh, watching WrestleMania straight through with no bathroom breaks. <laughs> yeah, I've done it before. I did it last year. So it's not my first rodeo. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. That being said, let's uh, start the show. Let's start with, we'll be wrestling with, last week tonight with John Oliver. This is probably oh boy. the biggest thing that came out of this week, considering oh, yeah. what's happened well, in the week. And it came at the tail of, like, right after we recorded our last episode. Yeah. And so with, this has been just sitting there for us, and we've been, we've been waiting to talk about it. Yeah. I personally felt that um, it was half fair, half unfair. The way, uh, because obviously, yeah, wrestlers should get m more insurance. They should be... Um, more. more ins they're not insured at all. But go ahead. Yeah, but like, uh, they should get that benefit. But I, uh, I feel it was unfair the way that he attacked WWE and Mr. McMahon. Um, um, showing some old clips that were from the 90s that have um, since been resolved in issues. Uh, okay. You, you, now, I do acknowledge that he, I think his his team and everything, he did the wrong thing by going to older clips. But his point was spot on. He obviously knows a little something about the business because he, he was talking to people like me, like – Jim Cornette, who yeah. they yeah. live the business. And, okay, and just hear me out on this. They 
have been dicking around their wrestlers for over 50 years, maybe longer, to because they know after, especially after the territory days, they knew there was only one show in town, and so they they didn't have to pay out. They didn't have to do certain things. Then when WCW came along, they had to do certain things to compete. You see, and then when they were bought out, things went back to kind of like they were the only show and they could dictate things. And they got complacent with it. And now with AEW back, they're having to pay their wrestlers a lot more. They're ha having to take care of the wrestlers. And I'm okay with them giving more money to their wrestlers in a exchange for like uh, coverage and stuff like that. Like if they give them extra money to buy co coverage, okay, that's fine. Uh, but there's so many other things that come with being employed. Uh, and the fact that Vince McMahon and WWE have been – Basically, uh, they've been cheating the system because they have been absolutely cheating the system because independent contractors can work for anyone else. It's illegal to have to call them independent contractors and then require you to only wrestle for you. I, I don't know how they've gotten past it. And finally, someone with a big enough uh, platform was able to have a poignant piece on it and give the clips and stuff that he showed and the comment of Roman Reigns being pedophile because of his wet hair. Those were some things that kind of, yeah, they, they kind of turned us off. But yeah. the overall yeah. arcing point is something me and other wrestlers have been saying for years, Jane. This is not something light. This is serious. It could have I, saved many lives. It really could have. I understand your point there, but like a wrestler like Goldberg, who in 2003 signed a one-year contract with WWE, should he get insured? Should he be get all those perks of WWE insurance? It depends on his contract. If he had a uh, he uh, just with WWE and they were still treating him like an independent contractor, yes, anyone that steps in their ring and is giving their body and their talent to WWE and Vince McMahon and putting their body on the line for him, yes, absolutely, they deserve every perk that an employee gets. Yes. Well, that's a. Uh... It's kind of a double-edged sword because you could give these guys insurance, but they could go to New Japan, but, Ring of Honor. That's one thing that wasn't included in the John Oliver interview was that there uh, is other companies out there like Impact Wrestling as well. Oh, okay. Yeah, but what he was talking about was when someone signs with WWE, they're not given the opportunity to go to NJPW or Impact. They have to play for WWE and only WWE. And if something is, doesn't go right or something, then they sit for the remainder of their contract and they don't get paid what they could if they had their merch out there and other stuff like that. WWE makes the majority on characters uh, liking, you know, like their character and all that, people's characters. Yep. That's why they rename them a lot so they can monetize their own version of the character. Yeah. And so when that person leaves, they could still own that property. So, yeah, it, it's been happening for years, and I don't understand how it it got this to this point where I thought it, I thought we were just like every wrestler was going to – this was going to go on. It was It's getting better, granted, but I thought everyone was getting ignored for forever. And finally, John Oliver got people to listen. It's something that I've been chanting for years. If the uh... – it's really serious. Like, the more I give you, like, examples of it, like, you know, later down the line, you'll understand where I'm coming from. But go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no. If uh, people are listening now, but that doesn't necessarily that mean WWE will listen at the end of the day. Because this is something that could cost them a lot of money. Not that they don't have money to spare at this point. But... I was just going to say... They wouldn't have any money if those wrestlers didn't do what they did every day that they wrestled for them. They are – they WWE knows it, and that's the problem with the independent contractor st status. 
if you rely on the talent of someone, if they are the lifeblood of your business, which a wrestler is, the world is like, like John Oliver said in his piece. Uh, that's why he said it so brilliantly. Then that it's illegal to for them to be getting that status in under the grapevine. I heard had Hillary Clinton won, uh, and not Trump, uh, that status was going to be taken away from them. So mm-hmm. yeah, that that that's a reason to back Trump. I would say. <laughs> well, another thing to uh, end it, this story is that Doctor E had a rebuttal towards John Oliver, and they did not want to hear that rebuttal on last week tonight. It wasn't a rebuttal, but James, it wasn't a rebuttal. It was the usual PR crap of, oh, but we've changed since uh, uh, the clips that you show, and they never answered the the outlining um, argument, the outlining argument, excuse me, which was... You are treating your in, your your wrestlers. You're calling them independent contractors, making them do everything that an employee does, but not fully employing them, not giving them the full. Um, it's not just insurance; it's all kinds of things like uh, breaks, so they don't go freaking crazy. Because every wrestler feels if you're out of sight, you're out of mind, kind of thing. That's how they get hurt so easily. I mean, so many things I could I could go on. That could be a show on its own. And yeah. so, I mean, if you mitigate those, you're stopping so many other costs that get out of hand for WWE that I honestly think it would come out even. And in contract negotiations, they can figure that into it if that becomes a new cost of the company. And I think most wrestlers would understand if they had time off, paid time off, if they had insurance, it, all the, you know, all the night, if they had all of their travel covered, all of that stuff. I think they'd be okay with having a lighter contract because most, a lot of that money goes to those expenses. Yeah, that's. It's just true. It, that it's, yeah, but like guys, <laughs> like the higher wrestlers, like on the totem pole, like Brock Lesnar, Cena, like they get the expenses paid for them. They're not. Uh, yeah, yeah, because they're big enough to where they got Vince to listen. Yeah, uh, but like that's, that's like so um, every, every Slater and Rhino, they're not getting those be quotes. Treated that way. Wait, say that again. I'm sorry. The guys like Keith Slater and Rhino, they're not getting those kind of quotes. Right. And I so said, this every, is something that could, like, only kind of equals to the mid card and below mid card guys. You know what I mean? No. But no, it's equal because there are still benefits that uh, the higher guys up are getting. Now, the higher guys up, the only reason why they're getting that is because they've they have worked like they've got to the point where like uh, and it's very rare how good you are. They but they they used their celebrity or their status to position it against Vince and say, hey, you got to treat me better and give me more. All of the boys should be treated like that. And so I agree with what AEW is doing in terms of – now hear me out on this. When I say equal pay, I don't mean equal pay all around. I mean like mid-carters get – all mid-carters get mid-carter money about the same. It, uh, uh, upper mid-carters, main eventers, you know, it, it's it, in that kind of scale. I but, understand that, but the, AEW it be hasn't been pay. proven yet. AEW no, doesn't but, even oh, have the first match okay, yet. But, my point is, but that is their model, and all I'm saying is that is a good business. That's a business model I would use if I was WWE. Now, they're a corporation, so they want to get every little nickel out of every little bone and body, and that's the problem. When you are a public corp- a cor- a pu- yeah, excuse me, a public entity like them in a corporation, you, have, you can't just think about the money like the pharmaceutical companies do because you are in the public. You have a public image to, uh, to keep good and keep clean. So why not take just a little bit extra of your money that you can absolutely afford? Because they, how, much, how many millions do they spend on the new XFL launch or Vince? Uh, so <laughs> that alone. Yeah. So uh, take a little bit extra money. Treat all your wrestlers right. Make a, make a, uh, pl- like a plan like the NFL just did maybe better than the NFLs, that covers 
all injuries and all that stuff, even for uh, after they retire, cover the boys, make them feel the way they deserve to be treated, and you will get good press for it. The money will come back in droves. I'm telling you, it will. And if they learn that, if they learn, uh, they learn that uh, issue, and they realize that they just get out in front of it, they could earn so much more money and still be on the right side, right side ethically. Then we would be in a great state. And that's why AEW is a good thing, even if they haven't had a match yet, because they are pushing the W or not the WWE, but the wrestling economy upward. They're making WWE pay more and under better terms. The next thing we could talk about about this topic is that WWE actually asked John Oliver to come to WrestleMania so yeah. they could he, educate him on their policy, and he also declined <laughs> that. Do you think right, that because, it's unfair that John Oliver doesn't kind of want to hear them out or their side of the story? Like he has I, his one side and he's sticking to that? I understand exactly where he's coming from because if you look at the – all they did was give a statement. And all that statement said was what I basically said to you. Like, we're, we're bettering our social media yeah. in the past. They didn't – they did not at all address things like the employment issue. They didn't even speak on it. And so it was a hollow it, – it was to me, it was just a PR stunt. It was just like, hey, come on. It, to me, it was like – how do I explain it? Like it, it was like they they were just lot, basically lying through their teeth to look good, to look better. Like, hey, we 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 at least invited John Oliver for him to come over and look for himself, but it's just not the truth because they wouldn't give him access to everything he probably would want, and so he knew that, and I understand it. It was a PR stunt. All uh finish this segment up with saying this. John Oliver is a known Trump basher and uh, <laughs> and well, uh, Donald, uh, Linda McMahon actually works for Donald Trump. I, so, I truly don't think that has anything to do with it because everything he said are things that me and other wrestling people say constantly and it has nothing to do with politics I promise you James. Just because it came from his mouth, people are trying to equate it to politics, but that's just not the truth. Yeah, well, um, there's always, there's always a hidden agenda with uh, political things. Uh, you know what I mean. But, okay, okay to me, okay, then let's just put that aside for a second. They are a corporation, James. They are getting rich. They have been rich for years off the backs of their wrestlers, yeah. off of this independent contractor situation because they don't have to pay half as much in taxes or – in stuff to help the wrestlers i don't un like i don't understand why it's okay in your mind or i i'm not okay let me put it this way i don't it seems like you're saying it's okay for corporations to take advantage of the worker because they have the more advantage or they have the higher uh, leverage and people no. like us that's our dream and so we'll do anything for it and so when you get a monopoly like wwe and they take advantage of it don't you need to put checks on that? No, what, checks I'm, and balances. what I'm trying to say is that professional wrestling is a lot of an auto structure than any other uh, com uh, sports community. You have the NFL, which all these uh, teams are under the NFL. Uh, so the NFL assures these football guys, the players. Professional that wrestling happens. doesn't have that yeah. that that tent over them, um, that this like like maybe back in the day AWA, but I don't think so. But um, they don't have that tent of of a a, comp a company overruling everything that happens in professional wrestling, giving these guys insurance. So like WWE could insure these guys, guys, but then they they'll leave and go to another company and vice versa. It's just an odd... The, it's just the, very the, odd the, how wrestling works. Yeah, I see what you're saying, but then you put a clause in the contract that says if you leave us for a different company, contracts will annoyed until a certain date if you come back or et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Simple as that. Well, that, 
that they could do that. I don't know it's if easy. they're willing to do that. It's easy. Lawyers would do it. Like you pay a lawyer a hundred bucks, he'd do it, or he'd put that line in in a contract for you. It's really easy. True. <laughs> really easy. Um, but yeah, I I just think we're. If you saw it from if you because I was a wrestler, if you saw it from my eyes, you would totally understand where I'm coming from. Uh, I think like if I get like the more I give you like little instances here and there over time because there's so many, I think you'll see when I'm coming from. But I, I get where you're coming from too. I just uh, I I just uh, I've seen yeah. it firsthand, you know. No, I understand, and I could see how you're talking about it. That you're very passionate about it. Very. My friends have died. Oh wow! Many fr wrestlers die young. Yeah, I've seen many of my friends die. Any wrestler, I or not just wrestler, but I mean, any, even if you for if you're in the business for a cup of coffee, or if you just try, you know, just yeah. uh, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, if you're just like a grunt for six months, you know, just trying it out, but you don't make it anywhere. It doesn't matter. Like. If you have a passion for it, you have a passion for it. So, and to me, it's just, it, it's one of those issues where I could, yeah. It, we could both to agree me. that uh, wrestling is incredibly difficult on the human body. Oh, my God. And not just the human body, but the human mind, because it's so stressful when you're fighting to keep your job and you're injured. Yeah. Oh, right. my God, bro. And off of that dark subject... Let's go on to yeah. a new, yeah, uh, on to a new subject. But, but uh, real quick, but it's the truth, and we're just trying to bring every perspective to the issue here. So we're just absolutely. doing our job. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And it's it's good to have these debates. Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. That's what this show's for. Absolutely. Now we're wrestling with a new segment. What, uh, Mitch? Do you wanna? Start our new segment off. Oh, I thought that was going to be uh, next week. No, right now. The uh, the news. Yeah, the mayhem report. Oh, but remember, I was trying to tell you that we were going to do this next week. I told oh. you about this. Yeah. As uh, as I seem to remember, hear well, we started an hour later, so you could write up this news. Oh, if you want a little bit of a, okay, I'll give you a little rundown. Uh, sorry. <laughs> Hello, everyone. This is Mitch Mayhem with the Mitch Mayhem Report. Uh, this is going to be a very, very brief one. I was going to debut the full version. I am going to debut the full version next week. But uh, just a few rundowns on the news recently this week. The Usos have signed a new five-year deal with WWE ending all of the controversy lately of their contract and if they would stay with WWE, go to AEW or whatnot. And so that ends that, along with AJ Styles and a few others, they are locked up with WWE for five more years at least. I'm sure that's and a, then, a big uh, relief for WWE to sign those, oh, lock down those big guys. time. The Usos are uh, the best tag team in WWE. Yeah, yeah. I'll say it. So, yep. Uh, it could have been Jellos and Guns, but, like, if they don't use them. Uh, I I have it under good authority that they're not resigning, and I I think they're going to go to AEW. But anyways, that's, that's not would, confirmed. I would think that they would go back to Japan. Then they're done that. Their boys are opening up. Why wouldn't they go help their boys? I'm just, like, talking, like, just uh, hypothetically. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. Um, I'm trying to find. Uh, oh, here we go. Sorry about that. And so, yeah. And so that the USO situation is under control. Joey Ryan and Eva Lee finally have been given the Lucha Underground releases after prolonged legal battles on behalf of both performers. So, uh, Joey Ryan and Eva Lee were basically put under. I heard eight years, ten years. I've heard very many accounts of how long the deal was with Lucha Underground. To where one person jokingly called it a for life deal, <laughs> and so uh, at least I know for a fact at least Joey Ryan and Eva Lee have finally purged themselves of that horrible contract, keeping them from wrestling elsewhere while Lucha Underground's off air. 
I don't think Lucha Underground's going to have a fifth season. It doesn't look like it. Um, so, yeah, that's good news for Joey Ryan and Evil East. Hopefully, Joey Ryan uh, for people sure. will, will stop, be in AEW. Hopefully people will stop beating up on Joey Ryan now. Maybe that's why uh, that's, all these guys have been attacking him on uh, being uh, elite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I don't like that. I don't like that gimmick, to be honest. I think, I they're think gonna it's bring, hilarious. If you I like want a it. Prediction for me? I'll tell you what it is, real quick. My, well, I don't know. This is a, a guess of where I think they're going with the gimmick. Okay, you know how they've been teasing, like, the where's the blonde hair girl referring to Candice LeRae? Yeah. Okay, well, I think they're going to have a blonde hair girl. Uh, it, um, it could be, and I, I'm just giving examples. It, it could be. Um, Oh, what's her name? Um, Joey okay. Janela's. Uh, Joey Janela's. Uh, the girl with Joey Janela. Uh, what's her Penelope name? Penelope Ford. Yes, it could be Penelope Ford or another girl like that. Like where she's shot from behind. It's a blonde girl, and then they team her with Joey to like to go forward. I could see that being part of the gimmick. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like for her to protect him. Yeah. And wasn't, like, but uh, teasing what, it's Candice LeRae, but bringing someone else in. Yeah, yeah. wasn't it teased like maybe having a Joey Joey um, tag team? Oh, that would be interesting. That, I, I didn't think about that. That would be awesome. Yes. I would like to see that. Well, Joey Janela, Joey Ride tag team. I like, I like that. That'd be an interesting. Uh, and, that, and then you have your blonde goal, there. And then Penelope Cruz to play along with Joey Ryan. Oh, my gosh. Did you, real quick, did you hear about the things Joey Ryan has going on for WrestleMania weekend? Uh, I heard, I just heard the but name. He has, he, he has uh, touch my dick for $35 photos. <laughs> you can touch it. <laughs> and this is why I hate Joey Ryan. He gets money, man. What are you talking about? He is monetizing his gimmick. And that is the yeah. point of professional wrestling. So. Yeah, you're totally right, but I don't have to like pe penis. No, it, <laughs> and some. Uh, I don't. Okay, I'm not gonna fully describe this because I don't know the full description of it. I'm going off of a report from my friend who was at the show. Uh, Joey Ryan had a match in which. I, and I don't know if, how, what, what context, but I just saw a tweet from my friend, and it said that, like, he did the penis flip, you know, uh, spot, yeah. but he took it from someone else after entering someone's ass. The fuck? <laughs> Take that out the, you want. You know what? And when I heard that, I was like, okay, now we're getting gay here. No, now no. it's getting gay. Next Next gimmick. Next topic. <laughs> We're done with this. <laughs> I think we have to preface it with a no homo before we cut the... Yeah, okay, now we're good. No yeah. homo. Okay, moving on. No, I'm joking. You need Just to, joking. The, this is I, 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 I asked yeah, you to a, people, tell me what was on your <laughs> list before we start the show. <laughs> Damn it, Mitch. <laughs> You're very funny. I'm sorry about that. Didn't mean to disturb you with that one. But um, to, uh, two well, more. Well, I'm two going to have list. that in my mind. <laughs> I am so sorry. I I've probably given you nightmares for the rest of your life. I apologize. Yeah. Moving on. Uh, moving on. Jim Ross and Justin Roberts have officially been announced as uh J Justin Roberts as the ring announcer for AEW and Jim Ross as a uh, behind the uh, behind. Uh, the curtain um, manager type, he's going to be involved. I thought it was going to be on decisions. commentary, too. No, I heard that's Excalibur and uh, Alex Fardez, I think that's his name. Uh, okay. he's, I don't hear he's going to be involved, at least uh, as of now. He's not going to be involved in ma like except in major shows. Maybe okay. the pay-per-views, yeah. Well, see, that's some good news. We, uh... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, Justin Hoffert's probably one of the best announcers since Howard Finkel. Yeah, and he got a raw deal because of the situation he, he that was in his book that he yeah. dealt with basically bullying and yeah, it's messed up. Just a quick sidebar, um, Howard Finkel's been dealing with some health issues as of late, but uh, I uh, heard that he's feeling better and he's actually at WrestleMania weekend. 
Uh, I'm sorry, your audio cut out. Say that again. Uh, Howard Finkel's been dealing with some health issues, and uh, oh yeah, I saw yeah, the picture. And he made it to and WrestleMania and weekend, and he actually looked pretty good. That. So, got to hear uh, that. It, it, uh, I've met Howard Finkel in person. I've uh, he's a very nice guy. I've shaken his hand, sh- shaken his hand, and had good conversations with him quite a few times. Um, he's always given me time of day, treating me like anyone else even though I was a scrub compared to everyone else around him <laughs> when I was around. Uh, and it's, uh, to me, it's heartbreaking to see him like that. Compared to, yeah, it was heartbreaking to me to see him like that. Um, uh, when I compared, met, uh, uh, my only encounter with Howard Finkel was when I told him, it doesn't matter what you think. <laughs> no, he's just a really good guy, and yeah. he's incredibly intelligent I, me i've had some great talks with him like we like out of nowhere like i'll just I, I the first time i met him we out of nowhere we just tripped into one of the better conversations i'd ever had with a person it was like we just i don't know what it was but we yeah he's just a very intelligent very kind man one of the and, good guys yeah one of the good guys and i wish all the best to him and his family and i hope he gets better soon and uh, Justin Roberts, that's fantastic that he's a part of AEW. Uh, Excalibur, really solid on commentary, a really good commentator. Uh, Alex, yeah. um, Marvez, some, I think. Yeah. I, it's something like that. I, I apologize. Don't I don't think will, I yeah. know him. He's from uh, one of the indie. Pro- I I forget which indie promotion. Um, I don't want to say the one I'm thinking of. Does he do like <laughs> video game commentary? Is he golden? No, Boy? no, no, no. He was an indie prom- commentary guy. Okay. He's just from like a lesser league that you don't know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then Excalibur, yeah, he comes from PWG, I think. So. Yeah, and he's done a couple shots for New Japan too. Exactly. Yeah, you know, you know yeah. Excalibur. Right. So. Uh, yeah. And then there's one more. Them. Oh, I have, I have really quickly just to uh, cap off this. Uh, new segment, and I promise you next week it's going to be better. It's going to be organized, everything. This was on the go. Um, The last bit of news, as I uh, teased last week, the villain, Marty Skrull, has been teased in the last Being the Elite episode. As as they were hearing his voice in the background and saying, hey, did you guys just hear Marty? I could have sworn I heard Marty. Uh, And and to, obviously, uh, debuting soon in the AEW, in the latest episode, this was shown. Uh, his contract, I believe, is up as of this this week. So We'll see what happens now. Yep. If, uh, actually, we'll, we'll find that, out tonight, because if he wins the uh, yeah, World of Honor yeah, Championships, yeah. obviously right. he's signed. If he doesn't, right. uh, it might be bye-bye if money. Loses, right. Yep. And that has been the Mayhem News, brought to you by Wrestling with Entertainment. Back to you, James. And hopefully we will have less more uh, less penises in the report next week. Yeah, I yeah I, I I'm I'm hoping for that too. <laughs> yeah, but you know, except for cross rest- your finger or yeah. cross your penis. I don't know. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I shouldn't have gone there. You really should. Let's uh <laughs> let's get to the next segment. We're rushing okay. with oh, I... <laughs> NXT Takeover. It was last night. Kaliko may have been there if uh he wasn't killed by a drifter with a hatchet. Um and it was an awesome show, I thought anyway. Yeah, I know. Really, like he his body's gonna be scattered in like a hundred different pieces all over the state of New York. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, yeah. R.I.P. Kalika. R.I.P. Kalika. But no, last night was amazing. Uh, to start the show off, I think it, the two, at least two of the matches that like were like ooh ah, were the two matches that started the show off. Those were amazing matches. The uh, tag match with the War Raiders. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, and Al- Alistair uh, Black and Ricochet, and then. Uh, I believe it was uh, Velveteen Dream. The Velveteen Dream match, yeah. Yeah. Then Velveteen Dream and... Um... Well, let's start off... Oh, I'm having a brain fart. But you Let, know what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. Let's start off with uh, the War Raiders defeated uh, Alistair Black 
and Ricochet to retain the NXT tag titles. Uh, Raw Raiders hit a uh, fallout on Ricochet for the win, and what was a really good match. Oh, that, dude, it was one of the better tag matches I've seen in a while, and I'm not just saying that. Like, And the crowd was it, hot for it. Oh, the crowd was hot all night. But yeah. The start, yeah, especially at the start. Um, and it, it was just an ebb and flow, it, especially with those big, besides Ricochet, those big of guys flying around the ring like that. It was something to behold. It was artistic at the highest point of wrestling art, in my opinion. And I would give it a four out of five, or a four point five. This would have had uh, okay. eighty-two stars if it was in the Tokyo Dome. <laughs> yeah, Meltzer. Yeah, Meltzer's star happy. Yeah, <laughs> especially <laughs> if if WrestleMania was in the Tokyo Dome, he would lose his fucking mind. I know, right? And it was in WWE, and it was packaged packaged differently, like more centered towards. Uh, Okay. Athleticism. If, yeah. If they could clone Kenny Omega, that he could be at every single match, that would just be Dave Meltzer's dream. His wet dream. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, him. Uh, yeah. A few others, but yeah. Definitely. Um. Uh, speaking of, uh, uh, oh, but go ahead. Yeah. The War Raiders. Uh, they they're known for having really good matches with smaller guys. I could remember. Um. Them actually fighting Cheeseburger and Wolf for Raw. And. Oh my god, Cheeseburger! <laughs> yeah. But like, you would think that was like a two minute squash match. They had like uh, a good 15 minute match with Cheeseburger, and they made him look like a million bucks. Well, if you can look, make a, a guy like Cheeseburger look that good, yeah, you got something, man. Um, yeah, I know, I get what you're saying for sure, but last night was amazing, it really was, I was, uh, I knew it was going to be a good match, I didn't think it was going to pop off like that for the start of the show, I knew the fans were going to be hot, but I didn't know it was going to be that heavy, they came out fire, and then they weren't joking, <laughs> both of them, uh, so, and I really do think, something tells me that Ricochet and Aleister Black are going to win the titles tomorrow at WrestleMania. I don't, I don't agree with it, but I think that's what Vince is going to do. Uh, if Vince really wants to bring these guys up, probably. Well, they're already up. He's just yeah, using, but it, I mean, like, everything elevate them to a higher stature. Right. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Well, yeah. he's already doing that. They, they hadn't lost the match until the NXT match. So. Yeah. While being on the main roster. Yeah. Uh, the next match up is uh, the Velveteen Dream defeated Matt Riddle to retain the NXT North American Championship. Riddle locked in uh, the bro mission, but Dream rolled Drew and pinned Riddle to retain the title. Oh, I love this match. Okay, these two guys are two of my favorites in NXT. Uh, with Bobby Roode was one of my Bobby Roode and Shinsuke Nakamura were two of my favorites. Like they're and then now these two they're not just my favorites in the NXT. They're two of my favorites in wrestling as a whole. I knew okay Patrick Clark before he was ever Velveteen Dream. It, when he did um, Tough Enough in 2015, there was just something about him. I, I I said to myself and my friends, he's this dude's gonna be a star. Like whatever gimmick he gets, he's gonna be a star. And sure enough. Like he, I, I, he made me right, man. He he proved me right. He is a star. He he has something that not many people have. Like it's not just the in-ring talent; it's the suaveness about how he acts and talks. He just has the it factor, the charismatic it factor, kind of like Rock, but in a different fashion. You're gonna get hot at me, but these are my least favorite wrestlers in NXT. Both of what? Them. Yeah. What uh, are you smoking, bro? Not what Matt Riddle's smoking. <laughs> well, uh, okay, and I will give this to you, though. Matt Riddle has some funky, stupid... Why they did it, I, I think it felt like a rib to me, uh, his theme music. I hate his theme music. <laughs> <laughs> Can't stand it. It sounds so wonky. I don't, like, I don't get it. He's so cool. Why doesn't he have, like, badass music, man? Well, Velvet Team Dream... I'm not a big fan of he's uh he just rubs me what? the wrong way. I just don't like the gimmick. 
Uh, okay, but you not, no, no. hold on. Okay, I understand about the gimmick. Okay, you don't like the gimmick, but can't you under can't you respect the talent and what he puts into that character and how he transforms from a normal person, how he can transform from from a normal person to being that character so seamlessly? It's not easy. It, it's something people try to replicate, but can barely imitate. Yeah, no, I'm. Uh, I think you got me wrong here. I I respect oh, what okay. he's done in the the business, and I don't think okay. he's a bad wrestler. So you're just saying he, you just don't want, you're just not with the gimmick. Yeah, I I just don't like him. I'm not. Okay. Uh, that's not yeah, knocking I... uh his ability because he had a killer match with Ricochet that I still no, remember. I was just, but I was just clarifying. I was Matt, just making a clarification. Yeah, and Matt Riddle, I uh I've only seen Matt Riddle in. NXT. I've not yet seen him wrestle. Oh, really? Prior you haven't to this. seen him in the independence? Oh, wow. No, you don't I haven't, know what you unfortunately. Missed. Uh, you missed a lot. People you always need, compare yeah. him to RVD, and RVD is like one of my all time favorites. <laughs> he's but, the new age. He's better to RVD, in my opinion. Um, he, he, and RVD was one of my favorites. Or, okay, back in the day, Jericho, RVD. Stone Cold Steve Austin, Bret Hart, and a few others. Yeah. yeah I love that. I was, I was a huge just like, fan. When people compare him to RVD, I was like, no. Because I'm still protective. Because you don't of know. You, but but also, you haven't seen the independent stuff. You just admitted it. Yeah. And he, so, okay. I promise you, if you see some of the, if you go back and like check out some of those clips from his past, you'll get it. You will get it. Uh, but he is, he's a natural. He's a natural. Like, dude, just, let me he, finish. Because this is going somewhere. This was the first time I actually got to see Matt Riddle of who he actually is. What, like a taste of what he was on the independence. And I thought this was a really good match. He killed Velveteen Dream. He dominated this match. Mm-hmm. And uh, that made... Uh, and then I kind of got why people like... Uh, Matt Riddle, I think he's now I'm a little bit more warmed up to him. I think he's uh I'm interested to see where he goes from this point, especially after this match with Velveteen Dream. Right, and I that was the saying. point I was gonna make. I got gotcha. you. So. So uh, yeah. Yeah, that's my personal uh. I thought it was a good match. I thought Riddle impressed. Plus, he definitely dominated the match against uh, Dream. Um, and he technically, he Dream only beat him by an inch. He got most of the offense in, yeah, for sure. Yeah. It, it was obviously designed to be that way, booked to be that way. But uh, it, it was a great match. It, was, it worked out uh, perfectly. The way it was booked and the way it was executed, it was a great match. I found I it interesting it. that um that uh there was there was actually some boost for Riddle. Maybe because there's what I'm sorry, say that again. There was some boost for Riddle. They were booing him for hmm. more in protest he... for, for Dream. I don't know. Maybe they're yeah. just Met fans. <laughs> well, we all know that the New York audience is a much more uh passionate audience yeah. uh and yeah that in like philadelphia new york new jersey area where ecw spawned from you know you know those fans and uh yeah they like to have their voices heard as loud as possible and um i i thought matt riddle would fit right in to be honest but i i think it was just more or less they liked velveteen more velveteen is just so like i said He's got the it factor. He grabs you through the TV. That sounds disgusting, but he, he, your attention. He grabs your attention through the TV. <laughs> You're like uh, one tree at this point, Mitch. <laughs> that, come on. Give me a break. You're being too hard on me, man. <laughs> but no. Yeah, no. I, I just, everything about Velveteen Dream's performance last night I really liked. The next match was Walter defeated Pete Dunn to win the WWE United Kingdom Championship, uh, ending Pete Dunn's 685-day reign as champion. This was historic in a way. 
Uh, yeah. Uh, sorry, your vo- the volume keeps cutting in and out sometimes. And I can you repeat that one more time? I'm sorry about that, James. Yeah. Uh, Pete. Uh, Walter defeated Pete Dunne to win the uh, WWE hmm. United Kingdom Championship, ending Dunne's 685-day reign as champion with a big splash off of the top rope. Yeah. Yeah, um, to me it was not a surprise at all. Pete Dunne's had a great run with the uh, with the British title, but Wal- Walter, who w- his name was pronounced back in uh, uh, Europe, back in Europe, was pronounced Volta, like V O L T A. I know I could have never understood that, but <laughs> um, it's just the accent, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but Walter, Walter is, or in Europe as he's called, Volta, uh, he's a special specimen. He's like a throwback to a kinder Bruiser Brody, in my opinion. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, he's he's just unique. He's, like I said, he's a throwback who's unique to now, and he's big, and he's got that opposing figure. He's just, he's the... Except for, yeah, he doesn't have the most charismatic look, but aside from that, he's he's pretty much the total package except for charisma. charisma. Yeah, and this is kind of like the match I would expect them to have. They beat the shit out of each other. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm yeah. expecting that. It's, it's a British strong style, uh, the two British strong style wrestlers. So yeah. and <laughs> that's what I was saying. It was kind of a toss up in my mind because I was thinking, if I, well, if anybody could beat Walter, it's Pete Dunne, and if anybody could beat beat Pete Dunne, it's Walter. Yeah, with uh, Pete, with Pete Dunne's uh, joint manipulation maneuvers, it, that works on any size of man. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I thought the same. I really, I agree with you on that. I thought if there was anyone that was gonna give a uh, vote to, him, and I was it was gonna be Pete Dunne. But no, I saw, I kind of see saw Volta like immediately grabbing the title if he came into WWE because he's just that kind of talent. I thought uh, I kind of knew that too, but like I was still like. It was the 685 days. It's like right. at, at the beginning of that reign, I wasn't really high on Pete Dunne. I didn't really feel like he deserved it because he was such a bad guy. But like it, uh, 685 days later, I'm like, come on, Pete, <laughs> you could do it. You know what I mean? I, yeah, I when I first saw him, I didn't like him much either. But he grew on me. He really did. I like this. I, I like his character. I, I and just when I got to know more about like how he grew up into the business, I didn't know he uh, he was him and Paige and Paige's brother. Like they came over together. Yeah, so, he had a bad there. attitude at the beginning, especially that tournament to crown that champion. And when he won the championship oh, uh, on uh, the Tyler Bates, the British t- uh, the tournament. Yeah. And then when he, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, and then when he beat Tyler Bates, I was like, why did they put this guy? (laughs) And I, I, yeah, Tyler Bates, he he's too young, and even then, he like he was more tailored for a tag team atmosphere. Like with Mustache Mountain, I think they're a great tag team. I I agree with you, Deb, but I uh, I also hate that they treat Mustache Mountain like shit. That they treat what? Say that again? They treat Mustache Mountain like shit. Oh. <laughs> uh, I, I, sorry, I am having problems with, they, they treat, let's try that one more time, I'm having problems with my volume. They treat who like shit now? One more time, I'm sorry. Mustache Mountain. Mustache Mountain, I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know why I could hear that the first two times. <sighs> Talk right, man, what the hell's wrong with you? No, I'm fucking with you. Um, <laughs> yeah. I have a um, lisp, damn it. <laughs> well, you're not allowed to have a list, damn it. Not on my time. No. Oh, damn! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> God damn it, motherfucker. But, uh, yeah, it, so, that Snatch Man is, un- oh, like, they're underrated, underbooked, whatever you want to say, however you want to say it. They should be, I think, if I was booking, I would take them away from WWE UK and put them on the... Uh, regular WWE roster. Well, we could make that. Uh, yeah, I, we could make that argument. But 
I just kind of feel like they don't have people rooting for them in the background. That they have a lot of people oh. uh, pushing them down. That's not, not my, no, they have uh, the fans love them. I think it's the company more more or less. It's yeah, that's what I meant. The company. Right, but um, as we saw with Kofi and others, if there's enough of a groundswell behind you, anything's possible. So, I mean, yeah, they could go the way of like a, anyone else, like TJP or anyone else who had a little momentum behind them and then got fizzled out by WWE, higher offices, or, you know, whatever, to what they dictated. Um, but we'll just have to see, wait and see. They've got a lot of potential, so. Yeah, and uh, that it's interesting to see what happens with Walter uh, and his new reign and how this affects Pete Dunne. Uh, because as we saw with uh, Okada, uh, he went insane after he lost the belt. So, uh, hoping that uh, Pete Dunne gets that medical insurance. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's it sh And it's not just WWE with me. Every promotion should take care of their damn wrestlers and treat them as employees, in my opinion, no matter how big or small. And that's, that's just, I know we... It was a joke, Mitch. Just, <laughs> I know, but I get back to that point. You know me. I yeah. that drum, man. I know, you're, you're hot about it. Yeah, because I lived it. And yeah. I have friends who lived it. Let's get to the next match. Shayna Baszler <laughs> defeated Bianca <laughs> Belair, Io Shirai, and she's a pirate! Kairi Singh in a fatal four-way match to retain the Women's Championship. Baszler locked right. Bell L with a uh, knee, knocked uh, Bell L with a knee and locked in the Kuchiwara clutch for the submission win. Bell L no longer undefeated. Okay, well, uh, first on this, uh, nothing relevant to the match at all. I, I for some reason, Io Shirai is exotic looking, and she's just the hottest Asian I've ever seen. But anyways. Okay. <laughs> uh, moving up. Yeah, I just had to throw that in there real quick. Um, Bianca Belair, I've said since last year, this time last year, was the next female star. And the fact that they had her take the choke out from... I know Shayna Baszler, she's on her... should be on her way to the main roster, in my opinion. But the fact that they had... Uh, Bianca Belair get choked out like that, I don't get it. Because Bianca Belair should, I would put it on, the title on her over either EO or the Sky Pirate Kyrie saying after Shayna Baszler was on, personally. Well, uh, my personal feelings, uh, going into this match, I wanted Kyrie to win. Uh, she's my favorite gimmick. Mm, she's a pirate. I I hate, I can't stand her gimmick. Like, you can't stand oh, the Matt Riddle gimmick. Yeah. But I can't stand it. If I ever see you, we're going to have a fight. <laughs> yeah. Let's go down, Bianch. But, but, you know, um, you know, maybe WWE 2K19. Oh, yeah. It'd be yeah. like a diva match from the 2000s, like hair pulling and shit. <laughs> I think there was a lingerie pillow fight in one of them. Yeah, just no lingerie. I ain't wearing lingerie for you, damn it. <laughs> you do what I tell you to, damn it. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. Uh, after coming, coming out of this match, I'm kind of glad that uh, Bianca took the fall because we don't have to hear I'm on the feet nah. anymore. Because she it. got I the feet I th I love her gimmick. I love her presentation of her gimmick. I see money signs in her. I really do. I hate the whole gimmick. I've seen it since she debuted. I hate her gimmick. I, I hate the whole presentation. <laughs> uh, uh, I'm sorry. This one. Hold on. Let me switch my headset. Say that one more time. Hold on. I hate the gimmick. I hate everything about her. Oh, wow. Yeah. She's so charismatic, though. How could you? I don't get that. Yeah. Uh, what's, what's your gripe with her? You like her. Oh, that's your gripe with her. Okay. Yeah. Well, I can, I can see your point there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> I'm going to make a prediction now. Monday Night okay. Raw, all said and done, 
when Ronda Rousey comes out to do whatever she's going to do, Shayna Baszler comes and chokes her out. That would, oh, I'm glad you said that because I've been pitching that in my mind and uh, my friends for so many months in terms of like the Shayna Baszler debut. That just and makes logical wanna... sense. Well, they're best friends. It doesn't make logical sense unless you make it like Shayna saying like, I see you over here like getting all this, um, you know, all this attention and stuff, but I'm kicking ass in the next thing. No one's taking it, you know, like giving me my props for what I'm doing. Uh, and so like something to where he's jealous and then the other horse women are brought into it somehow. It, it needs to work like that. And so yeah. if they can do something like that, it would be great. It gets Ronda Rousey okay. out of TV until yeah. October, and it and makes then, Shayna Baszler look really strong. I don't think Shayna Baszler needs anything else to look strong. Shayna Baszler is the most legit woman on the WWE roster, even over Ronda Rousey. I agree I with in you. A real fight, in a real fight, Shayna Baszler beats up Ronda Rousey. And I am 100% with you with that. I d agree 100%. But let's say you don't watch NXT. NXT is just something right. on the WWE Network. You're not right. going to know who Shayna Baszler is. You, If you watch right. the next Monday Night Raw and this random girl comes out of nowhere and chokes out Ronda Rousey, right. you're going to instantly get respect for her. Okay, well, number one, if anyone ever watched UFC, they'll know of her if they watched UFC at all because she was on The Ultimate Fighter as well. And that's that used to be kind of its own, like, bigger media thing. Um, and she just has a imposing, like, when she comes out, she makes people take notice. It doesn't take long for people to get on the bandwagon, so to speak. And so yeah. even with, the, yeah, Ronda's got the bigger name value, of course, but I don't think it'll take long for Shayna at all. Her actions speak very loud and they get over. Absolutely right. Uh, Shayna is, like you said, one of the best pure workers in WWE today. Probably, maybe in the Legit. world. Yeah, legit huh. workers, right. Yeah. Huh. Huh. She does her job correctly. She does solid promos and mm -hmm. she could you could put her up against charlotte or becky tomorrow and she would sell it yeah I, she would yeah she would definitely sell it and like do her best but i don't think she's ready for a becky yet it's only because of the style like she's not used to the 250 days a week on the road yet she's been in nxt you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's different when you're wrestling hurt, like, and you got to go out of the week and you're hurt. You know, that's different. Yeah. As opposed to just once or twice a month in the next two. Yeah. It's, uh, hopefully something like that will happen. Probably won't. Huh? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, knowing WWE. Yeah, and uh, that being said, Shayna's still champion. She's uh, so there's yeah. less likelihood of her coming onto the main roster as champion. I don't think there's any likelihood of her coming onto the main roster anytime soon. If they had made her lose the belt, then I would be looking for it. Yeah. But the only way I see her being uh, involved in any way is if they try to do like a full horseman gimmick with Ronda. Yeah, and she's a big draw for NXT. Oh, she's the biggest women's draw, so yeah. yeah. She's the champion. Let's get to the main event. Johnny Gargano defeated Adam oh, Cole to win the vacant NXT champion in a two out of three fall <clears throat> match. Gargano went oh. for... Yeah, what? No, 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 sorry. You go ahead. You finish your thought, please. Uh, Gargano went for a sunset flip, but Cole rolled through and hit... Last shot to win the first round. Gargano locked in the Gargano struts for the second fall. And Cole missed the last shot. And Gargano locked on the Gargano stretch for the submission win to win the whole shebang. Johnny Gargano is now a triple crown champion. He's beaten, he's been tag team, North American, and NXT champion. Watch out, Shayna Baszler. He's coming for you next. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, this obviously this took uh place of what was supposed to be Gargano and Champa. Unfortunately we're gonna have to wait a year for that. Uh the Champa gets better. And I hope he does get better sooner than it's expected, because he was the king of NXT TV, man, and he's gonna be missed. Definitely. Yeah. Um it, yeah, with okay now this match. This Gargano and Cole this was one of the best uh, displays of psychology I've seen in a long time from, from a wrestler uh, in the WWE, from wrestlers in WWE. They, like, they just everything, in, like, in terms of a- any type of psychology and their movements, like, they were, they were strategic in everything they did. It was not as flashy as the two matches that started the night, but it was just as much, if not more, of a masterpiece, in my opinion. And it's the most important match on the card. It's for the championship. It's the main event. Yeah. Right. So they have to put on a good show. Going into and, this, yeah, yeah, going into this, I wasn't sure who was gonna win, cause like Johnny Gargano, he's uh, they've teased him winning this championship, and he's been born so many times. And Cole, like he gets there, but like he at the end of the day, he does lose too. So it was kind of like. I'm not sure who they're going to go with here. I kind of assumed that they were going to go with Gargano because of the chart. They were going to go with Gargano to have him finally go over Ciampa. And so I thought they were just basically replacing uh, Ciampa with Cole and still going to have Gargano go over. And that's kind of what they did. Yeah, the, that was the initial dart. But... Right, and so I thought they were just going to just put Cole in the match but still have the same outcome. But then you, uh, then you could argue the, uh, the idea of, well, it didn't go that way, so maybe Adam Cole's here now. Maybe we could put the belt on him. Uh, a smart booker would probably at least think that, right? But yeah. this is a huge corporation, WWE is a huge corporation, and so they don't think like that a lot. Sure. <laughs> the, yeah, their money gets in the way of their creativity a lot. Unfortunately. Unfortunately, and I hope that changes. And and if our voices as wrestling fans are big enough, it can change. It's it's on us, it really is. Well, so beyond that point now, Mitch, but like ten I'm subjects out. Saying, <laughs> at, but it comes back. It can come back to this. So I'm yeah. just saying. True. Um, <laughs> Gargano made Adam Cole tap out twice in a row. So. <laughs> Does it not make Adam Cole look really bad? I don't know why they did that. I I think that was stupid. I really think that was stupid. Yeah, they shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Adam Cole, people compare him to Shawn and Michaels, and you're going to make him look that weak to sub out twice in a row? And the crowd was so that. hot for him. There were more Adam Cole chants than Johnny Wrestling chants. Yeah, Adam Cole Bay Bay, yeah, I was, yeah. That was like drowning out the arena, yeah. Yeah, uh, and that was like another reason I thought like, you know, maybe put the belt on this guy. Yeah, but that's a problem, and I think they need to be able to like call more things on the go. They don't do like, if they have something set, it's set. Like, yeah. it, it might change like a few hours before the match, but once they're out there, they do what they're told to do. Yeah. So, yeah, They're, they can't call an audible like in, independent guys can. That's kind of the, you know, yeah, it's an issue I hope also gets changed. Go, uh, go, it was nice to see Gargano win the belt, finally. Hopefully he won't lose it in his first defense like the <laughs> North American Championship. Yeah, they better do it. I, I, this is NXT, so I'm expecting them to do it right. I I wouldn't be surprised if he kept it, it like m- at least long enough. Well, like I was gonna say a year, but hopefully Champa comes back before a year, long enough to where when Champa comes back, they can at least finish what they tried to start. Well, so I still want to see the the culmination. Yeah, and uh, Champa came out for the end and hugged him, which kind of like you know kayfabe. Right, but they, they were already kind of playing that up, and I think, uh, like, before they did the taping where uh, Ciampa was going to throw him and then Johnny reversed it, but yeah. before that, they were acting all buddy-buddy, and I think, they like, with the Ciampa injury, they're reverting back to that now that they've got time to build it up again. Yeah. See what I'm saying? 
yeah, so that's what that is. Probably. The rivalry is still there. Like, we could go down, like, five, <laughs> oh six years down the road, and oh, it will still be, uh, you You did this to me when you hit me into the into the stage area that one time six years ago. Well, I don't know about that long, but I get what you're saying, though. Yeah, it's still got a long, it's still got uh, staying power. It definitely well, does. This is, yeah. and, you don't know about that. Randy Orton is still pissed mm. off about how Triple H attacked him for his w uh, World Heavyweight Championship celebration. But, He's but never come up for that. Okay, but that's in Randy Orton's head. That's not a huge uh, issue by the fans. The fans, it's yeah. not in the fans' minds. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I mean by that, yeah. Another thing that came out of this paid preview was that uh, they finally announced Kushida is coming to WWE. Yep. I, in fact, I had that as a bit on the news, but I didn't. I, I knew probably knew you were gonna say that, so I kept that out. Yeah. It's yeah. I knew for a few since. Uh, let's see. Since uh, Wrestle Kingdom, I knew he was going. Since right before Wrestle Kingdom, I knew he was going to WWE. Yeah. Um, he's been trying to come over to America for a while, and I can't wait to see uh, what he can do in NXT. My mind immediately went to Kushida versus Kyle O'Reilly too. Ooh, I would love to see that. That's a, that would be a great first bout for him. Yeah, that is one of my all-time favorite matches, and I'm. That's the match that got me hooked on these two, those two guys. Right, so to see it come again, to have that rivalry over again, I, I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully they do it. Yeah, yeah, that would I would love that. That that's definitely something I would love to see as well. I agree. Now we shift to our next topic: World Wrestling Wit. WrestleMania predictions. There are 16 matches on the card. I'm assuming three of them going to be on uh, the pre-sale, so that leaves us with 12. Mm -hmm. uh, so relatively uh, around the same uh, amount of matches as the Wrestle Kingdom, which I thought there was going to be a lot more, if I'm being honest. Because a lot of them got consolidated into like look like uh, Oscar and Mandy Rose into the women's battle role for for example things like that. Yeah. So we're going to uh, make our last minute predictions for tomorrow's show. Oh, and uh, <sighs> let's go to the the main event: Ronda Rousey, Becky Lynch, for, and Charlotte. Winner take all. I said last week Charlotte was going to win. Are you still on mm -hmm. Becky? Um, I'm after what I saw. Honestly, this for the first time, I will be okay with any of these three women winning. I I just want to see what happens. But deep down in my heart, I'd be lying if I didn't say I want to see Becky win. So yeah, Becky. Is that who you think's gonna win or who you want to win? Uh, uh right now both. But it could be it's it right now it's fifty 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 or thirty three thirty three thirty three. Like I think. Yeah. Either one of them can win. I really do. Because if I, uh, if I'm thinking who I want to win, it's Becky. But if, who I think's gonna win, I think it's Charlotte. Um, I'm gonna say Becky and Becky because something in the back of my head is telling me that they're gonna do a Brock Lesnar of the past and maybe give it to Ronda. I don't know, but no. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping not. That's to the next match: Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins for the Universal Championship. Okay. Yeah. Me first? Okay. Um, last week, I said uh, Seth. Yeah. But, and, and I also, this also is going to go to the next match with Kofi and Bride. It's of me changing my, uh, my pick. Um, yeah. Uh, I'm changing from Seth to Brock. Because oh. I, I, I just, there's too much fervor behind Kofi. Even though my brain says Brian, I, I, I think they're going to give it to Kofi. So if that happens, they have to have like the Brock. They have to have Brock beat Seth if that happens. Sorry, go ahead. I'm still I'm sticking with my guns. I'm saying Seth Rollins wins. Okay. Okay. WWE title match: Daniel Bryan versus Kofi Kingston. I think you already said yep, you're going with said. yeah Kofi. Yeah, Kofi. I'm going the opposite. I'm going with Daniel Bryan. 
Right, yep. Yeah, if I'm saying who I want to win, Kofi Kingston, but, like, you know. I just think it's too much, there's too much um, momentum behind him, and there's too much, like, already, like, people are already viewing him as, like, he's gonna win it. Like, so, in that case, I could see, like, an awesome, like, twist to it, but it would piss so many people off. It's got connotations of, you know, him being an African-American, there hasn't been an African-American champion in a long time, things like that, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, Triple H versus Batista, no holds barred. <sighs> okay. Um, uh, I'm 50-50 on this now, ever since Triple H put his career on the line. I think I'm, a, I'm afraid that he's going to do what he did in WrestleMania 31 when he faced Sting and have himself go over again. But I'm gonna go out on the legs and say Batista. Why would Batista come back unless he get goes over? He has no reason to. He's a movie star, Batista. I'm going the other way. I'm gonna say Triple H is gonna win, just okay. because uh, he is married to the boss's daughter. Yeah. He likes to put himself over, and he's no world near yeah. ready to retire, even though retiring means shit anymore. Yeah, it doesn't mean jack crap. All it, it's just a, all it is is a storyline. And it might just make it to where he, he doesn't have to be on uh, WWE TV and can separate himself and be more into, like, the behind-the-scenes stuff as he moves up in that, you know? Like, from NXT to maybe more main roster stuff. So, you never know. I don't know. Yeah. That's what I'm going with, Batista. AJ Styles versus Randy Orton. Okay, um, I'm going with AJ all the way. It could go. AJ Styles. It could go 50-50, but yeah, I think AJ Styles too. I'm also going to call this a uh, Mania match. This is going to be the uh, So Stealer. Okay, so far, I, out of uh, what we've already uh, discussed, I would agree. I want to see as we talk. We'll go. I'll. I'll see as we go along. <laughs> Miz, but so far, yeah. Miz versus Shane McMahon. Yeah. Okay. Um. Miz better win. Uh. Miz better win. <laughs> <laughs> Miz. Miz better win. What? Why do you say he better win? Because if he doesn't win, what is the payoff to Shane doing what I suggested he should have done in the first place? when he won the greatest in the world tournament and brag and boast about it and put it in people's faces even though he didn't truly win it. Uh, yeah. Why would he do that if there's no payoff? So, yeah. And the Miz, the grabbing Miz's dad's face. I just think there need, there has to have that payoff. All right. Uh, yeah, I kind of see Miz, too. I'll go with Miz, since Shane McMahon hasn't won a match. Otherwise, I would think maybe they would put Shane over, because it's not The Undertaker he's facing, he's facing me. So, yeah. You know, so. It could go either way at this point. Right, yeah, it could, but I'm going to go with Miz. Kurt Angle versus Baron Corbin, going with Kurt Angle. Yeah, if Kurt Angle loses, I riot, as they said in, when was, uh, remember uh, that banner in uh, 05, of, what was it, that ECW show? Was, um, and the... My, yeah. Yeah, when they were trying to do the reboot, but the very first one that was really good. One night yeah, stand. You know what I'm about. One night stand. Yeah. I knew that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, I know two ways about it. Kurt Angle should win this match. Yeah, but uh, real quick, I will say this. Baron Corbin took chicken salad, or took chicken shit, excuse me, and turned it into chicken salad. I, we all know, we both do not like a Baron Corbin. We don't like him. I don't think many wrestling fans do. But this last week, he did what he had to do to make like make a name for himself in terms of like a reason why he should be facing Kurt Angle last. He like said the things that he needed to say to like get people to really not just like dislike him but hate him and want to see Kurt beat him up. And that's what you do as a wrestler. And now I'm okay with it. But all that went to shit when he hurt uh, Rey Mysterio and made him miss his <laughs> WrestleMania match. Wait, say that again, I'm sorry. All that went to shit when he hurt Rey Mysterio and made him miss his WrestleMania match. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen with that because I think that's a domino effect because that's going to affect Samoa Joe. I think yeah. that was going to be Samoa Joe's punishment. on. Uh, let's been, get opinion. to the next match. Bobby Lashley versus right. Demon Finn Balor. 
<laughs> the, the demon who's gonna lick you to death. <laughs> 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 um, <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a little overboard, bro. That was a little overkill. But uh, like, anyways, just cut uh, the feed. I know, right? You just kept doing it. I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you're, it's like you're licking an invisible popsicle. But um, yeah, I, I'm gonna go with if he's doing, if he's bringing the uh, demon out. I don't, I don't remember him losing with the demon gimmick. So Finn Balor. I think he lost once similar to Samoa Joe. But that's some that's of a joke. That's what did. Well, this is Bobby Lashley, and this is Vince McMahon, and he loves Bobby Lashley. Yeah. Uh, I'm still, I, well, you know what? I might go with Bobby Lashley because there's been a lot of faces that I, I'm realizing I'm picking a lot of faces. So, Bobby Lashley. A Finn Balor. I want Finn, but I think yeah. Bobby will win. Yeah. United States Championship, Samoa Joe, possibly against Rey Mysterio. If this match is happening, uh, Samoa Joe. Yeah, if it's happening to Mojo, if, if not, they need to rebook it ASAP to where Joe has a match. Uh, Smojo is too damn good to not have a match. That's, yeah. yeah, that's a no-brainer. He is a superstar of epic proportions. If he's not on the WrestleMania card, that's a, that's a travesty in my opinion. Yeah, and my first thoughts, Mustafa Ali against Joe. Ooh. I don't know about that because I, Joe needs to shine, and you can't squash Mustafa Ali. You gotta look, make him look super strong if he loses or wins. So I don't know about that. Yeah. I don't know about that. It'd be a good match, but I don't think it would be a good for like what I'm looking for in terms of like Joe getting over. But they also Mustafa Ali is also probably. But it's a match on the card. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's possible. SmackDown. SmackDown Tag Titles match. The Usos vs. Shinsuke Nakamura and Russo, The Bar, and Alistair Black and Ricochet. Only one true tag team in that whole thing. <laughs> God, you're crazy. actually you're 100% right. I know, it's crazy to me. That it's, I don't get it. But, uh, yeah, and what kills me is th this time last year, Shinsuke Nakamura was in one of the main events. Yeah. And now he's put together in a makeshift tag team with another should be main event guy in Rusev. The fans wanted it, and WWE just shat all over both of them. I don't think the fans were that into Rusev, other than oh. just some to say Rusev did, but that's another time for another. Over. Yeah. No time over. for another. Yeah, that's another. I agree. Honestly, I see the Usos retaining here. Um, you know what? Um, I'm gonna agree with you. either. Okay, I, I'm gonna do an asterisk on this one. Either the Usos or the Bar, because it's it's honestly a toss up between those two, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, the women's tag team title: Sasha Banks and Bailey versus Beth Phoenix and Natalia, Nia Jackson, Tamina versus the Iconics. Oh, real quick, I just forgot about the uh, Alistair Black. It, they might put Alistair back and Ricochet over. I don't want to see that, though. But anyways, okay. Sorry. Now the women's tag team match. Um, I'm going to go with the Iconics. I can't believe... Yeah. You too? I, I think that would be... Yeah, that'd be smart. That would yeah. Be smart. I don't know. I, I find them incredibly entertaining. I'm, I love the Iconics. Yeah. They're awesome, dude. Yeah, they're awesome. They need to be pushed way more, way more than they've already been. But I'm afraid that they're going to go with a nostalgia act like Natalia and that. That's my fear. But I hope that they go with the icon. No, I, I didn't think they were going with the nostalgia act. I was thinking they were going with uh, Nia Jackson to Mina. Oh, they want to put a metal belt on Nia that's Jackson. That's kind of nepotism, yeah. <laughs> because they're the, in my opinion, they're the least talented out of all of them. Yeah, the, the issue here is to Mina, you know. Not a lot there with Tamina. Um, say again? There's, There's not a lot with around. Tamina. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Tamina's been in so many makeshift women's tag teams and women's yeah. groups before in the past. It's crazy. But, I, yeah, I get what you're saying. I'm thinking Nia Jackson, Tamina. Oh, God, I hope that doesn't happen. But I'm really, <laughs> I'm really pulling for the Iconics. Wow. So no one thinks that uh, the champs are going to retain. Huh. Interesting. Yeah. 
Roman Reigns versus Drew McIntyre. Oh, this is the time. Okay, you know what? I might go with Finn Balor in the past because now I'm picking more heels. So maybe in the past, 50 50 on my Finn Balor <laughs> because I'm picking Drew McIntyre all the way right here. I agree with you 100%. Drew McIntyre needs to win this you, match. You've got to. I don't think. I don't think, um, like, I want him to win the match, but I think he really needs to win this match. I'm, I'm both. I want him to win, and he absolutely needs it. Yeah, it's not a matter of wanting, it's a matter of needing to win this needing. match. Right, but I'm afraid that you know, this is Roman's first big match back since cancer. Yeah, you know, I'm afraid of the, you know, just that fact overshadowing anything else. I agree with you there, but that you you put put him down to bring him back up. Right. Yeah. Exactly. I agree with you, and I hope they do it. I just know WWE. You know. <laughs> yeah. I know how they are. You do too. Raw Tag Team Championships: The Revival versus Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawkins. Revival, one hundred percent. Okay, this is for nostalgia for me. I will admit it. Woo, 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 baby. I want to see Zack Ryder and Kurt Hawk and finally get something they deserve and win the tag team titles. Okay, what are, what are you smoking? <laughs> well, what? Ryder was more over than John Cena back in the day, and they didn't pull the trigger on him. Yeah, back in the day, and Kurt <laughs> Hawkins hasn't won a match in over three it's, years. That's called a gimmick. They, and they didn't do it right. They they, they should they should have done it right. They didn't do that gimmick right. But that's even more reason why, like, it seems like nowadays you have to kind of go on social media and say that you're not cool with how you're being treated. You're not cool just sitting and collecting a paycheck before they give you the opportunity. The Revival, the Usos, everyone who speaks up seems to finally get an opportunity. And they did, and now they're getting their opportunity. So more power to them, man. And I, I can't wait to see them this Sunday. Uh, yeah, to me, I just, I'm hyped to see them back together. Yeah. Double E Cruiserweight title. Buddy... I'm a big fan of the Edgeheads. So go ahead, sorry. Yeah. Uh, Buddy Murphy versus Tony Nese for the WWE Cruiserweight oh. Championship. Okay, this is going to be the sleeper in terms of talent, like in terms of the overall match. This is going to like this is going to shock people. I think that like in terms of what people are expecting, this is going to be a really really good match. Um, I'm going to go with my friend Scooter Dust's boy Tony Nese. That's his boy. That's his friend. Yeah, um, you know what? I'll go with Tony Nese too because, like, my the last co-host I've had had a bono for Buddy Murphy. So, yeah, I'm not I'm not high on Buddy Murphy. Oh no, Buddy Murphy's really good, but Tony Nese is he's been doing his thing for so long since he got to WWE. He deserves his chance, his time. He he deserved it a while ago, I believe. So, yeah, and, and really funny, real quick. Uh, like I said, uh, my friend Scott, that's his friend, and funny enough, and they're not brothers, but they look, facially, they look just the same. It's so weird, but... <laughs> you know, maybe he, yeah. he knows something we don't. Yeah, and it's probably going to stay that way, if that's the case. <laughs> yeah. Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. <laughs> okay. I got a big opinion, like a very, very strong opinion on this. Why the hell is Jeff Hardy in this match? I know. One of these things is not like the other. You're one person so <laughs> right about that. Thank you. I'm like, he sticks out like a sore thumb. Yeah. He I, He's I, the I, I only big it. name that's in there. Yeah, I don't get it. I don't get it. But, uh, so Jeff Hardy. Yeah. That's who you're going to win this? Yeah, I think it's oh, if they don't do the Braun Strowman thing with Braun, I think everyone's gonna gang up on Braun eventually and put with that gimmick, the, the stupid SNL guys, which is a horrible gimmick. Oh, I hate it. I have but, a um, bold prediction. Andrade. I don't like it. I think it's oh, you know what? Now that I think of that, I've been thinking to myself, why doesn't Andrade have a like more mainline match? Like he should have a match outside of the uh, men's battle royal. That would be someone besides Jeff. That I could agree with that. Yeah, I could see that happening. 
because that's to make a name, you know, they, they did that with Baron Corbin and they tried to do it with Mojo Rally. Unfortunately, but, whoever wins this Battle Royal never go up to anything. Yeah, I was just going to say, it's kind of more of a curse yeah. than anything. Uh, women's yeah. uh, Battle Royal. This is kind of the same. Why is Oscar in this match? Because they had nothing else for her. Yeah, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm riffing here from, from what I said about Jeff. It's just kind of the same. They kind of mimic each other. Yeah. Uh, Oscar, Oscar sticks out. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I'm throwing Oscar 100%. Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, if anyone else, if I can see anyone else winning it, the way they've been kind of propping her up and not wrestling yet, maybe Lacey Evans? Other than that, I don't know. I'll ask all the way. Because I know they have plans for Lacey Evans. I do know that. Uh, dark, uh, dark horse pick, Sonya Deville. Uh, see, I'm sorry. Uh, I heard Sonya Deville. Yeah, the, the a dark one. horse pick, maybe not, if it's not Oscar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Sonya Deville's not going to win it. And there's no way Sonya. I, I don't see Sonya winning it. But, no. um, yeah, like I said, Oscar or if anyone else, maybe uh, Lacey Evans. Maybe. That, and we will see next week who is right, who is wrong. If Coleco survived WrestleMania weekend. And, and we will bring it all to you next week on Wrestling with Entertainment. And I'm, first, this is the first time I'm ever going to say this. We are going to cover WrestleMania, all 10 hours of it. Monday Night Raw, Tuesday Night SmackDown, in one hour, next week. Oh, man. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll have my notes ready to go. <laughs> yeah. So, one hour, three cells. If you like the show, please like, subscribe, <laughs> and comment. <laughs> uh, I don't need reaction there. We don't have... Uh, there was no likes or comments last week. Let's try and get that up. If you like it, like it. Yeah, like this, us. I, I know there's certain people that do listen, and we thank you even if you just listen. Like certain people, if they only have time to listen, whatever it is. But if you could just take a little time out to drop us a like and, and uh, maybe a comment or just a like and a subscribe, that would be the world to us. So. It takes a minute. Uh, Not even. It takes a yeah. second. I was gonna say. <laughs> yeah. When, when, when you when there's someone on the road or someone busy with most of their day, you know, a second is everything. Like that's something time for them to do something on their mind that they want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. But I get it. I understand. And uh, you are uh, uh, give the p good people your uh Twitter one more time so they could tweet their love and or, and or hate for the show. <laughs> Love only. I don't deal with hatred. No. Uh, you can reach me any way you like, good or bad, at Mitch Mayhem X on Twitter. And you could find me on Reddit. I'm at James. Uh, well, not at. Uh, I'm James J seven seven seven. Yeah, I would, I tried to find you on Twitter. You don't exist on Twitter. I don't have a Twitter. That would explain it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's not because I don't want you to know my Twitter so we don't <laughs> talk. <laughs> why are you avoiding me, James? No. <laughs> you know why, Mitch. <laughs> uh, indeed I do, indeed I do. And with that, I've been James J. He's been Mitch Mayhem, and this has Mitch been Mayhem. Wrestling With Entertainment. Entertainment. See you next time.